Hello and welcome to the Franchise Tag Podcast with me, your host, Freddie Hall. We are back again. Me and Andrew back. Adam and Ash not with us tonight, but that's okay. They'll be going to join us in another week. So you can also catch Andrew and Adam on the Fantasy Podcast in the week. And also we have our Sunday preview show as well. But welcome to the Franchise Tag Podcast for the old fan, the new fan and the UK fan. What a weekend of NFL. More wins, more losses, heartbreak, tears. That's just being a Steelers fan, I suppose. But also some joyous moments as well. 109 yards, the Jags returned a kick four to get that touchdown. Um, joint longest play in history. I think the Cordwell Patterson's touchdown from the end zone for the Bears is what it matched. Um, and then we also saw Justin Tucker break the field goal record, 66 yards. I mean, really, it was the longest cross yard ch- crossbar challenge ever. What a kick it was. I felt so bad for the Detroit Lions fans. Um, but what a game that was. What a weekend it was. The, the great games keep rolling forward. The great teams keep getting better. Some of the worst teams are getting better. Some of the good teams are getting worse. It, it's just a, a circus of NFL that is happening. Andrew, another great weekend. Week three, we're going into week four. It, it's, it's, I, I, yeah, I can't, I mean, I, I've just talked about two record plays there. I mean, what more can we want from the NFL here? How exciting has it been so far? Yeah, it, it's so exciting. And there seems to be so many games going to the wire. Like how many games are being decided on that? Like, last kick of the game like uh, as a Giants fan obviously I've seen it (laughs) two weeks in a row but you know the Lions as well you know Chiefs are keeping us entertained as well so every game's going to the wire there's some teams showing up that we didn't think um, and there's some teams pushing that level to the next next level that we didn't think they had so uh, so far it's been so good. Green Bay as well. I'm shame Adam's not here. It's not even just last kicks of the game. It's the last drives of the game, last plays of the game that are making these memorable yeah. moments here in 2021. What a season so far. It's just going to get better and better. And the countdown really is on as well to the London games. What, three weeks away now? Is mm. that? Yeah, two weeks away, I think. I mean, they're going to be even better. We're going to end, we, we were like upset about what we were going to get with the Jets, Falcons and the Dolphins. Uh, who are the Dolphins playing again? I can't even remember. Uh, Jags Dolphins Jags Dolphins that's the one I mean these teams uh, they're even this is going to be exciting when they come to London and we can't wait and it's going to be such a good time we're going to be down there at the games hopefully the first game we're going to do a bit more F tag stuff to hopefully do some interviews with fans be a bit more around the ground second game I think we might take it as a uh, we're fans of NFL game rather than being there for to try and promote the podcast sort of thing but we'll be there so why don't you come to see us while we're there at the games Come and have a beer with us. Come chat some NFL. Maybe chat some fantasy football as well. I've been absolutely ruined by Ben Gilbert, uh, who is ruining everyone in our league. If you're watching the fantasy show, I I hope you're getting to know our names now within our fantasy football league. Ben is just decimating me. And what's even worse, what's even the worst pill to swallow about this one this week was I have Dalvin Cook, who was inactive. I did drop him before the game. I figured he was not going to play. But Ben picked up Alexander Matteson and started him, and he got like 25-plus points. It's just a killer. I mean, you uh, you talked a big game against Adam, and uh, it didn't go so well. How did it, mate? No, I mean, my uh, superstars didn't turn up. I had, you know, Nick Chubb and uh, DeAndre Hopkins, usual stable players. They didn't show up. The guy was 50-50 with James Connor. He did, um, but overall, um, I've struggled this week. Some, some some of the big players in the NFL, away from fantasy, really struggled this week. Um, we, we saw some different names cropping up on the board. So I think it's just going to be one of those seasons where whoever's hot on the game is going to be hot. Um, mm. So we might not see the usual names every week. And with injuries as well, there's some injuries setting in now. I've just oh. seen KJ Hamler is now out for the season. Luckily, I think James White's looking like he's heading to IR, so he'll be out for a couple of weeks. We've had two and now he's out for a couple of weeks. It, it's sad to see, but this is the nature of the game, right? Yeah, I mean, Giants um, themselves lost um, Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard in the first mm-hmm. half of the game. Uh, we've also lost Blake Martinez for the rest of the season now as well. Um, there seems to, We mentioned it last week on the same show. Um, there seems to be a lot of injuries this year again and it, they're like season ending injuries as well which is a shame so uh, um yeah it's it's, it's going to be a tough season for everyone i think 
Well, whilst you're watching the NFL at the weekends, obviously watching the NFL, watching your team, watching the games, also checking your fantasy team as well, watching them scores. You could also put some bets on as well, but why don't you use our affiliate Star Sports Bets? They have got all the best odds for the NFL this season. If you join them, use our code FTAG to let them know that we sent you their way. They've got some great NFL lines and odds for each game for players. Go and check them out. Star Sports Bets on Twitter online and everywhere else i suppose so go and check them out um just us two again so we're gonna have to obviously have two points to talk about so we're not as great as having all the guys here where we talk about more points and more input and more sort of things that are going on in the nfl it does become a little bit more direct on two points i suppose when there's only two of us here but I mean, we've got plenty to talk about still um obviously andrew you being my co-host i'm gonna let you uh while off i know who you're gonna talk about as well and i'm sure I will be talking a lot at some point about this subject as well. So uh, why don't you go ahead, what you bring to the table for us this week? Yeah, this is the great thing about this show. Um, this is a conversation I would have had with you via text probably a year, two years ago. And it would have been like sort of two hours worth of texting each other back and forth <laughs> of what we think. But now we've got a platform to actually air it, which is fantastic. So I thought, why not bring it to the table today? And it is your Pittsburgh Steelers. Um where where do we go forward from what we've seen? Um, they're now one and two, and then the last two games, I've really thought I've, I've sort of championed them heavily to have good bounce back fantasy weeks with some of their players, and it's just not happened. They're looking as sort of miserable and uninspiring as 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 my Giants as well, uh, and it's such a shame to see because of the actual talent they've got on both sides of the ball, which brings me down to. Big Ben, uh, mainly, is he the issue? Um, and what are you doing going forward? I think mainly my point being is is what you could do going forward, because we've always said the Pittsburgh Steelers are never, ever in a position come the draft to draft a quarterback, because they always have sort of winning seasons or good enough seasons, maybe not like fantastic season, but good enough seasons not to be drafting high. But the 2022 draft is stacked with excellent defenders. A lot of people took quarterbacks last year that are going to still be in that sort of first half. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be able to draft one of the big names? If, if Spencer Rattler and Sam Howell have gone, you know, is Matt Corral available? Is Malik Willis available? Which would suit them perfectly. With the talent they've got on their team, I don't think they need a franchise quarterback to come in and light up the world I, mm -hmm. you know they've got a good great running game now with Najee Harris I think he's going to be good and they've got excellent talent on wide receiver you know so are we looking for someone that just ticks the boxes like you see at uh, Minnesota with Kirk Cousins and Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill they don't need to be these uh, prolific fantastic quarterbacks you could go for someone in the draft so is it mm -hmm. time now do you think to stick Dwayne Haskins in there and see what you've got with him and roll out the season. And if you do have a bad season, you can go after one of those quarterbacks mm. or do you keep pushing with Big Ben to see if you can get something out of this season? I'm totally sorry. I've got an eyelash in my eye during you saying that's me with my eye going like, the whole time. I was not taking the mick or anything like that. But anyway, I'm going to try and avoid my pain in the eye that I'm getting. Instead, I'm going to have the pain in my heart I feel about the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a lot of points. There was that's a spider web of, of thoughts and feelings and points here um, that you've given, and also that I'm probably going to react with here. Um, why don't we start with the quarterback situation? So, for me, two years ago, we had the chance in the second round to take Jalen Hurts. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to take Jalen Hurts. I wanted to sit him behind Big Ben, whether it be for a year or two years. I didn't mind. I wasn't wanting him to start straight away, but I wanted to have plan B. That's what I, I really, really wanted. We took Chase Claypool. Don't get me wrong, Chase Claypool has been fantastic for the Steelers. He's really great. He's going to be a very good Steeler for a very long time. Very good wide receiver. Very happy we got him. But when you weigh up good wide receiver to the quarterback position, it's... It's you know it's 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 chalk and cheese. Qu quarterback is the most important position in football. That is what you're meant to go for, and you need a succession plan. This is what's frustrated me about the Pittsburgh Steelers for uh, the last three 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 years. Really, is there is no succession plan. 
Mason Rudolph is not that succession plan. Dwayne Haskins is not that succession plan, I, in my mind. I know you championed him at college. I know you'd, you've seen a lot more of him than I have. I've only seen his NFL career. You watched him a lot at college. But college was college was four years ago now for Dwayne Haskins. What, four or five years ago now? Four. Four years ago now. That His time has been and gone for me. He's he's not going to settle into the NFL. He, he's, he's not got the talent, I don't believe. Which is fine. Some college quarterbacks don't transition and, and get into the NFL. So with me, in next draft, quarterback needs to be the priority. Um, I, I really do think that. The problem is, like you said, we've had winning seasons every year. I believe this will be what Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season, I don't think. I think this might be Mike Tomlin's first losing season. I very much believe Big Ben is injured. He was injured throughout the week, tra- tra- trained very lightly. He hurt himself in-game, did go off into locker, didn't miss snaps, but did go off the locker while defensive play was happening. Came back very quickly, but it was so obvious, so apparent that he could not throw the ball down the field. Now, I'd argue he has looked that way for about two years now, three years maybe, but he can't throw the ball down the field. That is understandable. I didn't mind, but a lot of people would say to me, like, yeah, but Ben can't push the ball, he can't push the ball. I don't really care that he can't push push the ball because we were winning games doing what we needed to do. He was playing the short passes, slowly progressing down the field, little dink and dunk passes, short game, short yardage gains. I'm okay with that if you're winning games. If that's your game plan, that's fine. No one's upset in Tennessee that their game plan is to run all the time and then throw when they need to. That that's how you win games. People really had a go at Jimmy Garoppolo for not throwing the ball that year the 49ers got to the Super Bowl. My argument was why does he need to? What if they're winning games, they're running the ball down people's throats and they established in the first quarter every game the 49ers that year, what's going to work for us. They'd run the ball a bit, and if that was working, right, we're running all day long. We're going to run down their throats, and they'd win games. If they did the first quarter, hardly got any yards, and they were passing pretty well, progressing down the field, passing, they would stick to that. Okay, Jimmy G wasn't – their the winning game was so good, they were not doing that. You know, they were, for every four games, they were doing that down one game of passing. So it then got the focus of Jimmy Garoppolo – couldn't throw the ball when no they won games it, that's all that matters is win the games really but this dink and dunk is not working we had injuries like this weekend we had Dante Johnson got J- Juju Smith Schuster was out at, um in the uh fourth quarter admittedly um we we had injuries with our own line is considerably weaker mm-hmm. Najee Harris you say looks good and he's good winning back I'm not seeing it his stat like fantasy wise he was amazing because he had loads of receptions receiving yeah but they were all receiving. He's not running well. For me, but he's that, not running Is well. that to do with your, your, your O-line a little bit more um, than him actually being uh, not good enough to run the ball? I, I agree. No, no, I, I do think that. I think that he he's also a rookie. I think there is moments where I see him run where he he doesn't quite know what he's... He, what he, he sort of lacks... The, this probably is the wrong word, but it feels like he lacks conviction... Like he's he sort of gets the ball, and in, in my mind when I watch him, it looks like he's going. This is the play I think I should be going, but is that what I meant? To, it almost like he's just second guessing himself because he's not sure if the O line's good enough to do what he wants to do. He might question himself, but you know, at college I would just run into the guy, go over. You can't do that against Bobby Wagner's or, or you know the, these linebackers, Levante Davids, Devon Devon Whites and stuff. You can't just run over them. You you have to be a bit more technically savvy. And I feel like he's just trying to find his technically savvy part of his game. But and well, that's fine. We're in week three. Like I, I'm happy for him to have a okay season if that makes him develop and he has great seasons going forward. That's fine by me. Receiving game, yeah, he had those receiving yards. He could have had double what he had receiving yards that game. He dropped a lot of easy catches in the fourth quarter. Really easy progressive catches, I thought. Um so we moved on to that. Then, right, so we've addressed the quarterback bit. We've addressed the wide receiver a bit, but, right, the lack of, or, or therefore the, t- the talent that's there. He was missing Deontay Johnson, who is that his favorite target for Big Ben. We're addressing the running back issue. The O line we know is rubbish. The defense. Everyone says Steelers have a great defense. We were missing Alex Highsmith, who is not a true starter. T.J. Watt, Stefan Tuitt, I believe, was out or maybe played partially. That was really it. And we weren't that good. Devin Bush also played, even though he had he was limited in training all week. We did not look good on defense yesterday. We didn't look great at all. 
uh, in my mind, I watched that and went, oh, wait, no, TJ Watts is, is, is the guy. Like, he's the only great defender we have. We said this last year, though, didn't we? When you were missing one piece, it, it fell apart a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Unless you've got all the pieces and then... The, the, wow. sec the, the secondary's weaker this year. Minka Fitzpatrick's not having... He made two decent... If he got if he had, had got that interception yesterday, because there was one tip, but he nearly got the interception. If he got that, he did this last year though. It, of the first four weeks, he didn't really shine. And then I think week four we played the Browns, or week five, and he got an interception and it like ignited his season. He was like really really good. I think he he's a bit of a, he has to get himself into it, and I think he needs that confidence boost to really hit him home to. To then get the, the the defense sort of going, the secondary is significantly weaker. The, the front line, Cam Haywood is having a great year again. He's just so solid on the defensive line for us. Um, I, I just don't. We weren't missing that much, and yet we looked totally different to what we did in other weeks. Joe Schobert has not done much for me just yet, but I'm okay with that. He's only been there a couple of weeks. He is an older guy. He's a film guy, really. He's better than what we had in Vince Williams. I'm okay with that. I can I can cope with that. Him next to Devin Bush, I quite like. So th there needs to be more from that defense for sure. That's my roundup of the Steelers in general. But to, to go back to your question of the quarterback, it it needs to, it, it should have been addressed two years ago. It's going to be addressed this year. Um, I, like I said, I think Big Ben's injured. I think he's going to miss more time. Um, I think he's more injured than people, even maybe the Steelers organization is letting on. So, so, yeah, so back to that point. If he is injured, do I start? Do we start Dwayne Haskins? Why not? Like, you get that's what I'm saying. You've got what Packers, Broncos, Seahawks, Browns, Bears before you play the Lions. So, you've got a lot of tough games. Hmm. Is it worth just rolling the dice now on Haskins and saying, what has he got? Can he get any of that form? And if you lose and get hammered, You've got a great pick in the draft. But this is but, this is within the problem of the Steelers a little bit. Is you don't want a losing season. They maybe not want the losing season, but it's the lack of succession plan. It's the lack of what's next. I don't feel like we're an organization that we wouldn't do that to Big Ben. We wouldn't do that to Ben Roethlisberger. We wouldn't just drop him. I don't feel like yeah they they, they just wouldn't do it. They just don't have. The mini rules to do it. I don't. I don't feel like, unless he's injured. Now, if I'm him, I'm looking at it and going like, <sighs> the problem is, is his pride. He, if I was him, I, I'm injured because he is injured. I, I'm sure he's injured. He's just not looking right at all. Does he go right? Put me on IR. Put me on IR. Purposefully, we'll roll out Ro Ro Rudolph. Roll out Haskins. We'll check out how good they are. If they're rubbish, we'll get a losing season or maybe just get to about like nine and eight, eight and nine, maybe seven and ten sort of thing. And we may be low enough in the draft. We may get what? At seven and ten, you're looking at what? Or is it seven and eleven now? Seven and ten, tell a lie. You're looking at what? The 16th pick? 15th maybe? You could move up to... You could easily move up to. I don't think you need to move up. I said yeah, to you, you I don't think you need to move up. up. I think, no. like I said, I think you're still going to see Jets, Lions, people like that, um, Jags that have got, got their quarterbacks. quarterbacks. They're not going to take quarterbacks. Like I said to no. you, there is a lot of defenders, uh, edges, linebackers, safeties this mm. year, that uh, cornerbacks that look amazing for this draft. A lot of O line again, uh, real good O line talent. Mm. That people are going to be hot on, I think, at the start of the draft. And then I think you're going to see the likes of Spencer Rattler and Sam Howell sort of be looked at for the next lot. Mm. So I think you're in a position at seven and 10 to get one of the guys, like I say, like Matt Corral or uh, Malik Willis or mm. um, any of the guys that sort of like start to elevate themselves in into that echelon yeah. um, that you can look at. And I think they'll be good enough for you to to roll the dice at uh, in 2022 with the talent that you've, the young talent that you've got in that team. Yeah. And then you rebuild that O-line on free agency. But, but my, my problem is what we've seen proven in the last three, last five years, really, 
is there is a lot of quarterbacks who come out of the draft, play day one in a very good straight away. There's a lot of guys who progress. Josh Allen's a classic one of that, how he's progressed and how good he is now. We also have quarterbacks that sit. And it feels like the quarterbacks that sit are the ones that have become really, really successful. And my problem is two years ago, we should have had someone. We should have sat on behind Big Ben with his knowledge, with his gameplay, and they would have learned off him. Problem is now, I, I he should. I doubt he will, but he will retire. He should retire at the end of the year. I, I, I think I think he will, because I feel like with the TJ Watt contract now, you've got Juju Smith-Schuster's contract up. There's a lot of contracts that are now coming up, and yes, his contract is is big. Uh, well, he it, it, it did he did um, restructure it. Sorry, but th- there needs to be a bit more money in the pot. Um, especially targets like Mitch Schwartz. No idea why he's still out there. Mitch Schwartz should be a stealer. I don't. I really don't understand how he's not. Like, there's there's players out there. There's O linemen out there who are really good. Get get Mitch Schwartz on a year contract, and and have him there. I, I don't know whether they just want to like sort of train them up, um, or like get them experience. But you know, Kendrick Green's been all right in the middle. Trey Turner's hit and miss, but he he's still a veteran clip piece. Um, Zach Banner has been not great. Shukuwuma Cora Ford, not great. Um, yeah, I just, I agree. I, but the, the whole point is, uh, I suppose of your point is I agree. We should be targeting the quarterback this draft and I think we should be getting one. Um, but for me, it's a little bit too, it's two years too late in my mind. Not that I'm saying Jane, Jane Hurts has not been fantastic for the Eagles. Um, will he be amazing in the future? I don't know, but he could have been a he could have been in the in the right situation the right organization if he was playing in the pittsburgh i i do believe he'd be very good because we have a way better defense than the eagles we have better weapons than the than the um than the eagles okay we wouldn't have claypool if we'd taken hurts but we would have um deontay johnson smith schuster james washington was still at that point a competent third um i believe we had someone else at that time but i can't remember who uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's got to be the thing that we target in the next draft. So, one last thing on the Steelers before we move on, probably. Um, do you th- Mainly, do you think it's after three weeks, it's time to give up on the season? You beat the Bills. It's, do you think it's, it's not, time to give up? It's not time to give up, but it's it's we weren't convincing against the Bills. You, we were no, not convinced. Your defense was, but do you think there? Do you think you can get anything out of this year? Oh, I, 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 no, I'm not from what I, because because of what I've seen in the division. Bengals have beat us now once. They've now they've got the confidence now to when we go to their place to to beat us again. The Ravens are only getting better. They did have a slow start, but they're getting better. Um, Though they they do have their problems, clearly the Browns are a real team. They are going to the playoffs. There's there's two teams in front of us there that are going to be higher than us in the division. Um, so uh, playoffs for me is not is is not going to happen. I, I don't think it's playoffs. So what if you know you are not going to the playoffs? What's your next target to win as many yeah. games as you can, or to look at the draft? What what that that that, that, that is probably the million dollar question for these front offices is, right, we are not going to be... Within about five weeks, you know if you're going to be successful, I think. I think within about five, six weeks, you know if you've got it or not. And if it... it who, who have we got next two weeks? We've got... Um, Packers. Sorry, I'm calendar quickly. Packers Broncos, next week. Seahawks. Packers, Broncos, Seahawks. Browns, Bears, then yeah. the Lions. You haven't got That's, a let up for the next five weeks. No, we've not got a let up. We've not got a let up. Um, there is winnable games in there. Um but if if we get more injuries, it's a bit like a 49ers thing of last year. They had so many players injured. They just went, well, we'll just roll with what we've got and we'll see how it goes. And, you know, and we'll see where we get in the draft and everything like that. But this is where the Steelers, I worry for the Steelers. You say you sit, we could sit and, and take quarterback 15. I don't know whether the Steelers would have the gall to jump up to a, a, a two and go and get the best guy. Like, you know, the, the 49ers moved all the way up to three. Yes, we've moved, we moved up for Devin Bush, we, but that was a mid-round pick. In fact, I, I think that was 10, actually, or maybe 11, but we've moved up from the mid-20s. I don't see us 
maybe sitting at between 15 to 18 going right we are taking spencer not spencer out there maybe or sam howell or you know going up to four now we could sit and we could get a, we could get a guy like like you said we could but yeah, you could come around the to, Patriots come with Matt Jones, didn't they? they did they did and it was good business by them i but i don't know do, do you target the which what do you go for in the draft i suppose it's just what happens in a at, at draft time so a very uh sad Steeler fan admittedly but and not a very confident one but my annoyance is we this issue should have been solved before and it's not been and that's what annoys me really more than anything um anyway enough about my Steelers. let's move on to my point um I started this writing down a statement, then backtracking very quickly, because when I look at their stats, it's not all that pretty. But I watched their highlights again after I did all the stats, and I look. I, I, this is purely on my eyes, really, and I really wish Adam was here with us. The Rams are going to the Super Bowl. The Rams are going to the Super Bowl. I am so impressed with them. They're so good. And I'm going to read some of the stats because it's not pretty reading the stats. It's not actually that positive. When I did, I wrote that down straight away. As soon as I was thinking, I think about the weekend, I thought about the points to show. I thought, who did the, the Rams? I remember watching that game, seeing the game with the highlights with the, with the Buccaneers, obviously watching Red Zone. And I was just seeing Brady's face at the end of the game thinking, oh, the Rams are so good the rat they've just absolutely dominated this game be the bears 34 30, 14 the first week the colts 27 24 they weren't even good against the colts really they weren't actually that great i watched the highlights again and they were not that impressive um and against the books last night beating 34 to 24 three no in the nfc west the cards are three no as well the 49ers are two and one the hawks are one and two okay very tough division i get that. i completely understand that um, but there are the eye test for me. They are just so good that Matt Stafford trade has got to be one of the best trades of the offseason, if not one of the best trades ever, to be honest. Because Sean McVay has looked to, has had Jared Goff them years and it worked. That's what's worst. Jared Goff worked in their system, but they went, no, we need to get the next guy. The next it only, worked, yeah, it only worked when they had a run game and a good O line. Yeah. But well, yeah, you could argue that. But. It, it's it, it still worked. It still worked with him in the centre. But if they had, this is where the stats are a bit shaky, obviously, with, with the running game, because their running game is, is appalling at the minute. Even though Darrell Henderson does look very good, even though he was injured last game. Um, I just love this team. I just, Cooper, every offensive player is making plays. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup is leading the league in, in receiving yards. The Tyler Higby tight end screen. I mean, he is just ramping it up he looks fantastic at tight and then he had him and Gerald Everett last year and they had that dynamic between them he is really taking it on his shoulders being the lead tight end and he's really looking very good as well the defense the secondary is not look is it's not been as impressive as last year they have lost some names but I'd argue the names they have got people like David Long players like that outside of Jalen Ramsey the highlight key guy them players are doing well. They're just not the jo they're not the Josh Johnson, the John Johnsons that are playing there. You know, they're not got that. The, the, Darius Williams is still good. They just don't have the name that they did have in that secondary. That defensive line still is fantastic. Um, Seb Joseph, uh, Seb Joseph Day or Joseph Sebastian Day, he's so good next to Aaron Donald. That really works. I, I, and he's not particularly an amazing player, but it really works. And Floyd is playing probably some of the best football that he's played for a while. Um, and if they are just so exciting. The problem is, you do look at the stats, and there is, I am going to pick holes in my theory because it is the eye test that I'm going on here. They pro, pro football reference as the third best offense, however, when you look through it, I don't really understand how. Um, <clears throat> I think it's based on passing touchdowns, really, because they have nine passing touchdowns, which is second. Um, they have 913 passing yards so far, which is sixth. So, very that's you know, very, very good top half of the table there. They have 251 rushing yards, which is 27th, and two rushing touchdowns, which is 22nd. We've only had three games, we've got to remember, with these stats. So, Sony Michelle started last game. Darrell Henson didn't. I think Darrell Henson is, is way better than uh, than Sony Michelle, uh, but hopefully he won't be out for too long. Um, <clears throat> they have 6.7 yards per play, per, per play. That's third. They have 10 yards per passing attempts, which is second. So, they are just killing it in the air. They do need that complementary run game. 
but Stafford is that good, and these are receivers are that good. They they will op- they they just take the top off of you. It, the, the Cooper Cup this year has been has been great for third round draft pick, thirty three targets, which is second in the whole of the NFL. Twenty five receptions, second in the whole of the NFL. Three hundred sixty seven yards and five touchdowns, both first in the NFL. There, one hundred twenty two point three yards per game. He's having the best. Probably he's looking like he's on course to have the best season, best season of his career. He it looks so good. Um, Matt Stafford, like I said, I mean, it's just such an elevation. You, Matt Stafford, we said it in a podcast before on one of these shows before. If Matt Stafford had a career with a competent team around him, would he have won a Super Bowl? That was one of the arguments we had the other week, and I think he might with this team. I mean, 942 yards already, his fifth in the league, nine touchdowns, which is second, only one interception, 10 yards gained per pass attempt, which is second. He's going off. He's showing what a, a quarterback is. I was out at Matt Stafford at Detroit, which again, talked about this on this podcast before. I said he needed to go. I didn't know what situation he would go to. I didn't know if he would succeed in the situation that he'd go to, but he is very clearly succeeding. He does need this run game, though, to get better. But I think it will. I think Henderson is a very good running back. I think he just needs to get going a little bit. This O-line is still pretty decent. Their defense on the other side of it, again, eye test, they look so good. Names on the sheet of paper, they look so good. Some of the stats, though, do contr- are to the contrary, admittedly. Um, they have 90, they've allowed 92 completions, which is 31st in the league. That's awful. 844 passing yards at 26. That's really bad. But they've only allowed two passing touchdowns, which is third best in the league. So that tells you that they let you go down the field, but you're you're not getting the touchdown. They they'll let you they, they'll let you move the ball. That's fine, but you're not getting the points, which I can which I can live with. I think as a player, if I was in that team, I'd be like, well, that's fine. You can you can move the ball wherever you want as long as you're not getting the points and winning games. That, that's all that matters. Again. Um, they've uh, allowed 200, 278 rushing yards, which is 12th. That's really good. They have allowed four rushing touchdowns, um, which is, is it, that needs to be buttoned up, I think, a bit as well. Again, there needs to be that dynamic there of, um, of shutting down the touchdowns. Somewhere they've done that, obviously, very much in the passing game, but the rushing game, they still need to sort of get involved there. But they have faced two mobile quarterbacks in, um, well, well, two, well, one quarterback in, in the Colts, the books. You got one of them rushing touchdowns was Tom Brady sneaking it in. Mm-hmm. So we could call it three, let's say. Um, they're also really disciplined. They've only had 13 penalties, which is fourth in the league. They've had nine sacks, which is eighth in the league. They just passed the eye test. I know the stats don't say it, but they do. They are, they really are looking like a complete team. And what's worse is they they show you what they're gonna do. They did you did you notice this when you watched the game? Twice, Deshaun Jackson went up the field. Twice. And Matt Stafford overthrew it or, or underthrew it twice. There was one where Deshaun Jackson just lost it in the air. And it was about, I don't know, a foot in front of him. A more athletic receiver maybe would have leapt out and caught it. He did it twice. He went, if Jack, D-Jack gets past you, Deshaun Jackson, at what, whatever age he is, 30-odd, is still lightning quick. We know him for them big plays. Twice against the books. He ran up the field and went, we're going to get you. We're going to get you at some point. Boom. Matt Stafford over the top to Sean Jackson in the corner of the field. Touchdown for however many yards it was. It was a big play. They will get you over the top. They will get you in the short game with Cooper Cup, with Tyler Higby and Robert Woods. They have weapons everywhere. And what was great to see is to Sean Jackson getting that touchdown. Who's the first guy to celebrate with Sean Jackson? As he ran down the tunnel for some reason, just in the end zone, it was Sean McVay. Sean McVay ran from the sideline all the way to celebrate with him first. This team is really coming together. Sean McVay, four years ago, was seen as this offensive mastermind and everyone wanted the next Sean McVay. And in the last two years, it's gone very quiet about him, I feel. But you should not be quiet about it because this offense is rolling and this defense can really roll as well. I know I've argued my point in a bad way because of the stats, but stats don't tell you everything when you're watching a team that just looks that darn good. Yeah, I mean, I've got to agree with you. And I don't think I've ever got off of the the Rams bus uh, from Mm -hmm. when they started to get good. I think even when even people dropped off on them, I was still like, no, Sean McVay, offense, Mm -hmm. key players, defense. And they've kept a lot of those pieces. And even when they've lost pieces, they lost Ebu Cam, they lost Rockers, you know, Mm -hmm. Brandon Cooks went. 
uh, they've replaced them. They just moved bits around and they've managed to keep a strong unit. Uh, and you haven't even mentioned Van Jefferson, who I think is a, is a fantastic player. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's had a great um, But I, I, as a person who plays sports uh, and have played sports my whole life, it's always been a, an indication that if you can win games without getting out of second gear, then you it's your year sort of thing like I've always been a mantra of that even even uh playing the sport that i play now if you're winning games and not fulfilling your potential and still winning when you do fulfill your potential you can be anyone which is what we're seeing from this team you say the stats aren't impressive they are because they're just doing the basics mm-hmm. really well and you know that that is a testament to how to win games you don't need to be Arizona flashy and you know doing all everything and looking great every week you just need to do the basics well run your plays outsmart the other team on the day and that's it and that's what they're doing uh and they 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 know how to do it they've had three games which I think were potential banana skin games you know Mm. bears bears week one that is a potential banana skin not knowing what the bears are going to do this year but they, they passed that test easy then they played the Colts, and the, I really like the Colts roster. I think they're really good. They're really strong. Their O-line's beat up, and Carson Wentz is a bit reckless at the minute. But it could have been a potential banana skin game that could have. But, you know, they did what they needed to do to get the no, another one in the win column. Mm. And then the big test was against the Buccaneers, which I think they passed with flying colours. Um, they kept a team quiet and they went about their business and won it well i think they are definitely a team after beating the buccaneers i think next week again is a bit of a test against the cardinals i'm not sold on the cardinals but they keep proving me wrong every week well that's the tough bit is their division that is the tough yeah but i I what they're what they're showing from like you you said about the nine skin games what you i we've spoke about this before about it's something we probably our listeners are a little bit bored of about. We talk about these 50 50 teams, the ones who are the guys who can beat the guys on the same level, and then who are the guys who can beat the top guys. Now, when you are at the top, you know, that everyone's going to come after you. Now, the Rams aren't at the top of their level just yet. Like I said, they're still in second gear. They, they have not reached They're still level beating people. Just yet. And they're still beating people. Exactly. They are beating these 50 50 teams. The books, the books is the best team out of these three teams that they face, and they've beaten very easily. The Colts was a, is a team I think on the same level as them. Good defense, very good defense. Maybe not offensive wise, they've got the names just yet, but they they did what they need to. They didn't even play that well against the Colts. Things went their way, admittedly in some in some scenarios. But this is NFL. This is what happens. You have to have some of these things go your way. Um, in my mind, I just when I as soon as I put wrote down Rams going to the Super Bowl, did all stats, I was like, ah, oh, I don't know if I, I. It's a bold statement. And then I, after I did all research, I thought, is it a bold statement? I looked and I, I just thought, well, who's better in the NFC? Who's There is no, I'm sorry, there's no one better in the NFC at the minute. I, I don't, I really don't believe, outside, I, the, the top team is the NFC at the minute, the books. Um, God, I got, I got, I, this is where I need to remember all my divisions and everything like that. Now. The books and the teams that are in their division. That for me is the good teams in the okay. NFC. Are we that sure? <laughs> I mean, they, they, they have looked impressive the last two games. They won on the last play against San Francisco. Against a very good team. It was the 49ers. I mean, come on, let's not say, you know, there's something that the Packers every year have struggled with. Beating teams in the last two minutes when you're down, they are unable. But what, what did they say? Rogers is 0-65 against teams with winning records in the last two minutes. Oh, really? He can't finish. And he's, he's done it, <laughs> finally. Uh, I don't even know whether Ron spoke about that. I don't know whether I'm making stuff up, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm right with that. Um, they, they face the Packers later in, in the year. Um, mm. It's not, you know, they might already be qualified for the playoffs by the time they play the Packers. Mm. But um, yeah, I, can't, uh, I don't know. That's week. That's week twelve for their play. So the, the, this is next. Yeah, yeah I can't see them being beaten at the minute. I, I can't. I think they're better than the Cardinals. Seahawks aren't as strong as what we thought they were going to be. Then they play Giants. Lions, Texans, Titans. I think they roll all of those teams comfortably. Yeah, I, I think they roll them. Then they've got 49ers, bye week, Green Bay, Jacksonville, Cardinals, Seattle, Minnesota, Ravens, 49ers. That's a tough, that's a tough five weeks. So, so Cardinals, Seattle, Minnesota, Baltimore, San Francisco. 
that 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 could be but like you said like you said with uh, they could be in the um they could have qualified let's say let's say they're like you know number one seed by Arizona at 40 at week 14. So if they, have, if they haven't lost the game by by week, what do you say? By is by week twelve, by week eleven, yeah, eleven. So you know they're they're ten and zero <laughs> by then yeah. if they haven't lost the game, and I think they could do that. I think they are are you know if, fingers crossed they stay healthy, they don't have any more injuries. Mm. I think that this team gels and gets stronger and stronger week in week out. The more opponents they play, I think they'll get stronger. Um, so yeah, they, they could be ten and zero by the time they get to. By week, I mean, you're not not qualifying for the playoffs after that, are you? This this, this is something that we we watch the Colin Cowherd show a lot. We talk about it a lot. I know a lot of people aren't into it, but I, I, me and Andrew do enjoy it. Um, one of the big things he says, and I completely agree with him about is, and this is what this is what pisses me off about the Steelers and about a lot of teams being aggressive wins in the NFL, and they were laughed at about the monetary situation, about how much debt they would be in. And about no first round picks when they went and got Stafford, when they went and got Ramsey, when they went and signed Brandon Cooks to a big deal at the time and then traded him away. They've done some peculiar moves, admittedly, but the Rams have always been aggressive. They were aggressive in the year they went to the Super Bowl. Okay, they lost, but they were aggressive that year with getting them players signed up and everything like that. They they have been aggressive and aggressive wins, and they're showing it again. They went and got Matt Stafford. They went and got their guy. They know that Matt Stafford's probably got oh, know, elite level. Matt Stafford's got what four years, maybe five. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Five. I'm going to give them five years. If they can, you know, they, they've they want to. They are a bit of a win now team. I do admit that, but I'm I'm okay with that. They're just gelling, like you said. They they really they will click and they will get into that third gear and they're going to be unstoppable. Get unstoppable against some of these teams and. They they have got the fixtures on their side. I, I my concern is the division. Their division is really good. I know you're not big on the Cardinals, but the Cardinals are, are, are for me. I really enjoy the 49ers Can beat anyone on the day as long as they stay healthy. They're a little bit up in the air. I think I don't I feel like they're not really sure about their identity at the minute of what they're doing because of their running back situation and stuff like that. Um, Seattle. Eric, you can't go against Russell Wilson when he's in the driving he seat. Yeah, he can win by himself he'll, on his day. He'll win by himself on his day. So they're the games. They're the games that they could slip up. Is the, is in division? I think outside of division, they win all the games. I thought they have New York Giants. They beat Lions. They beat Texans. They beat Titans. They beat Green Bay. I think they'll beat. It's at, Green, it's at Green Bay as well, isn't it? In November. Ah, okay. So maybe I mean, they may. That I think the only thing they've got on their side with that is Stafford played in Detroit for his whole mm. life. He's used to that weather. You know, they're, yeah. they're across the lake. So yeah. um, I think you haven't got like when Jared Goff was going there. He was a California boy. He was, you know, used to the hot weather. Um, so I think you've got you got a different quarterback going there. But um, yeah. I might lie to you. It might not, it might not even be at the Packers. <laughs> yeah, no, you are. No, you're right. Oh. It is at the Packers. Um, they then got Viking. They're at the Vikings. Vikings in indoor stadium, I believe. Yeah. Um, at the Ravens, I think they beat Minnesota. I think by by week seventeen, I don't think they need to beat the Ravens. Like honestly, yeah. I honestly don't think they'll. Well, they, they, might that might, for the, they might be playing for that bye week for the number one. They may be. They may be. They may have sealed it. By either then. way, um, I think if they they're going into the into the playoffs in a strong position. So, mm. does that mean for Matt Stafford get MVP? Is it he, depends. He... What, it depends what the you know if they if they continue to do what they've done. I don't think he's going to shine enough to. He's got to be in the in the candidacy, but I don't think he's going to shine enough. Lamar Jackson for me. Um, I've, I've, I championed him sort of coming out of college as, as don't like overshadow him. And then I've always been a bit of a doubter of him in the NFL, which is a shame because I really want him to do well. But I think I feel like he's making steps. You know, he's winning those close games. Mm-hmm. And I think that shines more as ha- what you've done for the season as, a, as an MVP uh, mm-hmm. at the minute for me. Um, you know, he's winning those giving him the ball with one minute left on the clock. He's mm-hmm. driving the team. He is yeah. the team. He's got the, like we've always said with Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson is putting the team on his back and carrying them yeah. to victories. And I think that just shines a little bit more for me than a quarterback coming in and stabilizing a team and playing well. For, for me, it's Josh Allen at the minute. 
I, I, I think he's got the flashy stuff going on as well. I'm, I'm really into Josh Allen at the moment. Um, that's all that we've got time for. Andrew, thank you again for joining me once again. Uh, thank you all for listening or watching on YouTube. We're on social media. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Go and follow us. Go and give us a like and subscribe. Make sure you check out Affiliate Star Sports Betting for all your NFL betting needs. Another great week of NFL. We've got a great week coming up. We've got the Fantasy Podcast on later in the week. We've got the Sunday preview show. Lots of things happening here at the Franchise Tab Podcast. Until then, though, have a good rest of your week. Mm-hmm.